rupees 1000 par value bond is bearing a coupon rate of 14 percent matures after five years and the required rate of return on this bond is 13 percent calculate the value of the bond now you need to keep in mind whether it is bond shares a project in the company it doesn't matter when you want to calculate the value of anything value is equal to present value of future cash flows so in this case what is the value of the bond okay the value of bond is going to be equal to the present value of its future cash flows it's maturing after five years that means we're going to receive interest for five years okay so it's going to be present value of interest plus present value of principal principal that kind of principle now when we are thinking about the interest for five years at a coupon rate or in other words interest rate of 14 percent we are going to be earning 14 percent of a thousand that's 140 if you're not sure your weekend math don't hesitate simply do it on the calculator 1000 into 14 upon 100 140 that means we are going to be receiving 140 five times 140 plus 140 plus 140 plus 140 1 2 3 4 plus 140 now, in the fifth year, once it matures, you will also get your principal back, which is a thousand. So, if I want to know the present value, I am going to make use of the required rate of return. That's why they've given it to us. Okay, so always remember, coupon rate is interest rate. Thirteen percent over year is basically your discount factor. Okay, so this is going to be upon one plus zero point one three. And instead of doing this again and again painfully, just remember, I've taught this in previous videos, 13% is equal to 0 0.13. So if you're thinking about 1 plus R, which is equal to 1 plus 0 0.13, we are going to end up with 1.13, 1.13 to the power 1. Why? Because we're making use of the present value formula present value is equal to future value all of these guys okay all of them all of all of these numbers here are future cash flows okay so it's going to be future value divided by 1 plus r to the power n okay so this is the first year's interest that's why to the power 1 this is the second year's so to the power 2 third year's to the power 3, fourth years to the power 4, fifth years to the power 5 and you're getting this also in the fifth year so again to the power 5. Now I can painstakingly do this or I can for these five years find out the present value of future cash flows for 1 rupee. So we know that present value is equal to P open bracket 1 minus 1 upon 1 plus R to the power N the whole thing upon R. I am now going to substitute the values for the numbers given to us. First of all I want to do it for 1 rupee so instead of taking P as 140 which you could consider doing, but I want to tie it in with the kind of answer your uh, question set actually has. All right. So what happens if I take for one rupee and one minus one upon 
1.13 to the power 5 the whole thing upon 0 0.13 okay so i'm going to do this math and let's see what i end up with so 1.13 no 1 divided by 1.13 so 1 divided by 1.13 when i press equal to 1 it's to the power 1 I'm going to press it another four times. So we reach the power five. Two, three, four, five. Okay, so now this is to the power five plus minus. So one is me this divided by 0 0.13, which is 3.5172. Okay, and that number that we have over here is nothing but your is nothing but your present value interest factor annuity. All right, so it's as good as taking three point five one seven two once and for all into one forty. All right, so plus. Okay, so if this is a if this is a present value interest factor annuity which we're multiplying into 140 we similarly have to take our present value interest factor and multiply it into a thousand so the formula for present value is equal to future value upon one plus r least the power of n and if i want to calculate present value interest factor that means the numerator will have to be assumed to be 1. So 1 upon 1 plus 0 0.13 raised to the power of 5. So that is 1 upon 1 1.13 and I need to do this 5 times. So 1 divided by 1.13, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. All right. And this of course came up when we were doing the previous calculation. 0 0.427 and this is 5 so I'm just going to round it up 0 0.5428 okay so 0 0.5428 0 0.5428 into a thousand this is going to look very similar to the answer that your question set has why have I done all of this so that you understand where it's coming from and if you're lucky they're going to give you the table the present value future value annuity tables as part of the question paper if they do that then you don't even need to use the formula just within the table look for these numbers they won't be difficult to find anyway we have done the long cut let's finish it we have 3.5172 which we will multiply by 140 and that gives us 492.408 i think we can call that 492.41 492.41 uh, you don't need a calculator for this there are three zeros here the decimal point is going to shift three spots this way but for those of you who are weak in math for your benefit we have 0.54 to it into a thousand okay so 542.8 so 542.8 and i now add these numbers up 542.8 plus 492.41 which gives us 1035.21 thousand and thirty five point two one which is the value of the bond